Last January, the game time temperature in Minnesota for the wildcard playoff between the Seahawks and the Vikings was minus six degrees. The wind chill reached minus 25. It was the third coldest game in NFL history. So imagine my surprise as I watched an 88-year-old man walk out for the coin toss in short sleeves. That man, of course, was Minnesota's Hall of Fame coach, Bud Grant. As a coach, he did not allow heaters on the Vikings sideline. His teams won 11 division titles and played in four Super Bowls. But Bud's on-field accomplishments are just the tip of the iceberg in this remarkable man's life. I think you're born with an interest in the outdoors. It's not something that you can bring a kid out in the, out in the woods and tell him to enjoy it. I mean, it's something you're, you're born with and I just happen to have that gene. We didn't have a car that worked half the time, so I take a bus. And I had a 22 that I could break down, I put it in a bag, put it in the bus, and go out the end of the bus line and shoot rabbits and squirrels, and that's what we did. Can't shoot swans. Bud Grant still embraces the outdoors. Fitting for a man who made his living working in nature's most trying conditions. Harry Peter Grant, buddy boy, as his father called him, came into this world wide-eyed with issues. I didn't know I had polio until it was almost over, but I was limping. And uh, finally they took me, you know, as a growing boy, they took me to the doctor and he said, give the kid a baseball mitt. Let him go out and play ball and work his way through it. But for a while there, I, was a little, I had a little gimp to my get along. He lettered in three high school sports while World War II raged overseas. School was not very important to me. I want to go in and win the war. The week after I graduated from high school, I was in the Navy. In the summer of 45, he was deployed to the Great Lakes Naval Training Station, where he learned his football from future Hall of Fame head coach, Paul Brown. 300 people come out for football at Great Lakes, 300 guys. And it was a matter of attrition. I mean, we scrimmaged every day for a month. I survived all of that, all those scrimmages, and uh, fortunate enough to play for a guy like Paul Brown, which was a great experience. After the war, Bud lettered in three collegiate sports at the University of Minnesota. The Philadelphia Eagles made him their 1950 first round draft pick. But instead of signing with the Eagles, or returning for his senior year of college basketball, Bud challenged the NBA's amateur status rule. I don't have any money, you know. Why can't I play pro basketball? Now, I was not a super basketball player. I had an opening, had a local guy, and maybe he could sell some tickets helpfully. So they petitioned the league. I was the first hardship case in professional basketball. And my contract was first year was $3,000. Now, we made another $3,000 because we won a championship, but that's $6,000. Well, that was enough for me to get married on and have a family and buy a house and buy a car. Later that year, Bud married his college sweetheart, then took her on the only honeymoon they could afford. We went duck hunting. I put her in a hole in the ground and waited for some ducks, and then the, I heard a goose on the other end of the slough, and I walked around there, and the cows came down the trail and looked in her in the hole in the ground, and she had to get up and run and get got caught in a barbed wire fence, and the dog barked at the dogs, and she got all wet and muddy, and that was the last time she ever went duck hunting. The Eagles quarterback, Adrian Burke, from his own 17-yard line, fires a pass to Harry Grant. He juggles it as two Steelers close in. In 1951, Bud became the only man ever to play in both the NBA and the NFL. In 1952, he finished second in the league in receiving, but refused to sign his Eagles contract, making him the NFL's first ever free agent. When the season was over, they said, well, now you gotta sign another contract. I said, well, how much? And they said, me, give me $8,000, not enough. So I walked off and I said, well, we'll be, in, we'll be in touch. The next time they called me, I'd already signed with Winnipeg. As a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, Bud led Canada in receiving three of the four years he played, before team management summoned the 29-year-old to a postseason meeting. 
I go up to the office and they'd said, well, we fired Al Sherman, the coach. Would you be interested in the job? They want to give me a two year contract. I said, oh, I want one. If I don't like it, I want to go back to playing. What, what I got to lose? <laughs> Never coached in my life. It didn't take him long to learn. Are you superstitious? Norm Rawhouse bursts through the right side of the Hamilton line, puts his club in the lead with a dramatic and sensational last minute touchdown. There's the gun. The game is over. Coach Bud Grant has good reason to be happy today. Two Grey Cup appearances in his first two years as Winnipeg coach, and this year, a national title. So that was a defining moment. After that, I thought, well, you know, I can do this. And it was uh, when I re had that realization, then it was a full goal all the way. Shortly after Bud's first Grey Cup win, Minnesota millionaire Max Winter and his ownership group approached Bud about coaching an NFL expansion team in Minneapolis. Harry Peter Grant remained in Winnipeg and added his name to the Grey Cup three more times. Winnipeg was a wonderful experience. I can't think of a more enjoyable time of my life than it was in Winnipeg.